Just to ever touch music, uh, let alone hip hop. So, um, yeah, it's a good day. Not only my birthday, but we're about to bring like a hundred million records onto this stage right now. So uh, they go by the names of Take Heath, Sunny Digital, and Sizzle Southside. And uh, yeah, they named countless hits, man. We got After Party by Don Tolliver. We have Fuck Up Some Combas from Future. You know what I'm saying? We have Sick Up My Diamond Records and all of that. So uh, if y'all could please make some noise for my friends, my brothers. Take Heath, Sunny Digital, and Southside! How y'all doing? Indeed. Amen. How's it going? So yeah, um, the reason why we call this 10,000 Hours is because these guys literally have decades and decades of, uh, of hits already uh, of being a part of this music industry. And um, even though they're all so young, you know, we have like the Quincy Joneses of the world and we have like the Pharrells of the world, that we came in with this whole resurgence of, of new music and new sound, and these three guys are really at the head of, of all of this. So um, I guess we'll start out by saying, we'll start with the basics first. We'll just pass the mic, we'll start with Sonny. What was your first ever placement that you knew about, and what were you doing when you found out about it? Um, my first placement that was like an actual hit? No, it's just first placement. I'm talking about on an album, on a mixtape. Just here. The first time you recorded a, a song with an artist and it came out. Um, my most rememberable one was like with Juicy J. Yeah, is that right? We, yeah, it was, we, we did a whole bunch of songs like um, Juicy J came, um, just all the pre-stuff yeah, yeah. before Benz and Make a Dance, like right. the eating them back up. You know, that, that was like, to me, at the, like, like at the beginning of that, that was like a placement and stuff, but it, I wanted like generating money from it. Right, though, right, exactly, it was, yeah. But it was just like, just good to, you know, just get a placement, you know, get some under your belt. Right. Yeah, we're gonna just touch on that later too. So, Tay, what was your first? Yeah, I'm gonna say Juicy J too. You know what I'm <laughs> but, 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 Juicy J hold it down. Yeah, but but it was it was it was it was a lot to go with this situation. You know what I'm uh -huh. saying? I, I, I like to be honest, I got took advantage of. You know what I'm saying? I was 16 at the time. Uh -huh. I had um, basically made a beat. You know, and it got to his people. He wanted, to, you know, he wanted to beat. But um, he ended up dropping the song to give me credit. Even though we end up eventually running into each other down the line, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? That was really one of my first big opportunity in the, in the industry. All right. Sizzle? I'm going to say uh, Waka Flocka. Yeah. Uh, I made a beat for Big Bro called Let Them Gun Sounds, and that shit just went oh, yeah. nuts. Like, nuts, <laughs> nuts, nuts, nuts. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So I want to piggyback, piggyback off of that and say, a lot of people that make music that aren't producers might think that your first hit means financial success. So, <laughs> so uh, if you want to touch on what the difference is between a financial success and just a simple placement that might even be a viral hit or a viral success. Um. Look, I, I feel like people be chasing that first hit so much, but right. they don't know what comes after that, though. That first hit, it really damn near don't even matter. It's, right. it's a game of proving yourself. You know, you're going to get that first big check. It's going to be cool, but you got to kind of sustain your lifestyle after that. Like, you know, and the only thing that's going to do that is if you can get another hit. Right. You know what I'm saying? And the only thing that's going to keep that going is if you get another hit, though, because... Right. I promise you, like your your first three or four, probably five hits, like you gotta make five of them to get solidified. Like, oh, you actually are good at doing this. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I feel like people be chasing that first hit, but don't understand the responsibility that you gotta do to like hold that shit up. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't just, you know, just make a hit and then just expect for the rest of all that stuff to fall in line. Like, you know, it don't really work like that. All right. To to go to your point, bro. Like when you get you a hit. You gotta build your relationship with the A and R's. You gotta build your relationship with the publishing. You know right. what I'm saying? You gotta build your relationship with with these with these folks who are around the rappers that you're trying to get to. Because like, if you ain't got these relationships, they don't got no reason to really fuck with you. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. Sometimes. I ain't gonna lie. They just both of them just said. Yeah. Perfectly right. <laughs> you're right. Everything right. both of them said, I agree with 100. Like, right. you know, stick to it. Don't let up. Don't even think about it. You. That's how I am. I'm not even gonna think about it. if I got a hit. I'm trying to get 20 more. Yeah, right, right. Why that? Why that one going? You know what I'm saying? So I agree with both of them. All right. Don't get caught up in that one hit. You get left behind. No one hit wonders over here. Not should have be gone. 
yeah. two months. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I got a quick question, like for an up and coming producer, like who were in your shoes maybe 10, 12 years ago, you know, like what were y'all on? Or like what were you doing in life at that point, like when you got that first hit? You know? Man, I was looking up to these niggas. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> trying to trying to trying to send these niggas beats and collab with these niggas, you know what I'm saying? But it was like that was a different time. That was before streaming. So that was like that pill live mixtapes era when you know when when a lot of producers was, was was coming up in my era. So we was looking more for the credit more than getting paid. So right. if your name was on a song with they say like like Flocka or, or Young Scooter or Gucci back in the day produced by you, oh uh, you the man. You the nigga, you know what I'm saying? Especially like when when like Chief Keep ever came, you know what I'm saying? That's when it really was over, you know. But like, what were you actually doing? Like, what were you at at that moment in your life? Like, were you uh, in school? Was a, were you working? I was you, I was in high school, you okay. know, and I was I was at the time I was making beats, so I kind of had like a buzz, you know, making beats for niggas in the city, like upcoming rappers. So at the time, I probably was like 15. You know, about 10 years ago, I'm 25, so I was 15 and And you knew at that moment, like, you knew what you wanted to do, right? Yeah, yeah, So, sure. But you got a, you have a college degree. Yeah, right? I went to school, yeah. I mean, can we make some noise for that? Can we applaud that? <laughs> so when you got to that fork in the road and you graduated high school and you were like, I know this is what I want to do, and college isn't going to provide the avenue for this, right? Right. So, like, what made you decide to just continue and go and pursue the education while you were also pursuing a career in production? I mean, I had a couple of different reasons. Like, I, I, I said this in a couple of interviews, but my mama was getting her Section 8 through me being in school. I had to be full-time enrolled in school so she can keep getting her voucher. You know what I'm saying? So that would kept me in school. That's what's up. Southside, what were you doing when you got that first play? When you linked with Walker, like, what were you, what were you at in life? What was... I was bad as hell. <laughs> just extra bad. My big brother Wu over here, this ain't no lie. I was just bad as hell. But that's what made, like, I don't know, it kind of went with what we was doing, because Brick Squad was on some, we gonna pull up and beat up the whole club shit. So I had to make those kind of beats, but you can't make them kind of beats if you're not around it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Right. So, I was bad, though. Very bad. Like a bad kid, bad. <laughs> Sonny, where the hell was you at, bro? Where, where was I at when, when, when? Well, you got that first hit, first hit, like when you did racks. Like, where were you at in life at that moment? And, Shit. Or, I mean, I'm speaking on racks from YC and Future, you know, for those that That boy Top Geezer. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. A Top Geezer. Man. <laughs> yeah, I think it's crazy, but. Man, I don't really, I don't really quite remember, but what, what I do remember is that check, the first check I got from that motherfucker, though. What you do with it? Man, I, Man, I went to the I went to the mailbox, and I, I had a B on my check. That shit was for forty thousand dollars, man. It was up. <laughs> hey, it was up. I, hey, look. Hey, well, look. I was scared. Though. I was like, man, I think they might have made a mistake. So I, 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 I went to the bank and deposited that shit so quick, like, man. I'm like, I'm gonna wait till this shit clear. After that, I went and cleared. That shit cleared. I went and bought me an old school. I don't know why. Yeah, too. Yeah. I just went back in the crib and got them started making more beats, man. Right. Like, right. You know what I'm I didn't even get a crib when I first got that 40 racks. I didn't know what to do. I was just gave my mama some money, bought me an old school, and I was back making beats. I can get used to this type of hop. For real. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can get used to this shit. So uh, this is a question for um, for Sunny and for Southside because y'all have been in this. Uh, for so long, not to make y'all sound old and nothing like that, but y'all are very much veterans in this uh, in this producing game. What just for all the uh, producers and the DJs out there, what what do you think are the biggest changes from even 10, 12, 15 years ago as far as your processes with hardware and software, as far as the technology of actually making beats? What do you think um, has changed your processes the most, or has your process even changed over time? Um. I'm gonna say this, the loops is like the change and all this right, shit right. now. Like you got like kids everywhere making loops, right. sending out loops, loops on loops on loops. That's what changed. Right, That's yeah. what's changed this shit. It's making it like, like I told myself this year, I don't wanna go try to use no loops. I'm gonna sit down how I used to make beats right, and make this shit like that. Right, it's right. like so, we being lazy now. So how'd you used to? Huh? How did you used to? Just make it from scratch. No, Sounds and all, no loops. A loop wasn't even, right. that wasn't even a thought. Like you know right. what I'm saying? But you do support the loops, like you. Eh. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel you. I feel you. I'm, I'm going to tell you why I say that because, like, even like QBs, me and Metro was the first niggas to do something with QBs. Right. It's just like they don't, like, they go up and they just switch up. Like, they, like we need them down there, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, yeah. the ones that's real humble, yeah, I fuck with y'all. But the ones who acting like we didn't put you in this position, we did. 
your loop wouldn't went nowhere if it wasn't, you know what I'm saying? Cause, right, right, cause, right, cause right. we the ones in the room. For Some sure. niggas all the way in Germany, Spain, <laughs> all, fucking Croatia and shit, like all type of places, man, they ain't never gonna get next and to it, none of these niggas, right? It be hard. I'm talking about they going crazy, the loops be fine. Right. You feel me? What about your own loops? Have y'all sold those to these different, uh, I guess these different sound exchanges and, and stuff like that, that, the services that provide the loops? Yeah, I, I did with a company named Splice where they were selling my my drums and my sounds and all that shit, but I'm about to, uh, I'm doing my own slice right now called 808 Mafia Sounds. That's what's up. Yeah, because it's just like they all, every kid in the world go there to get sounds and get, you know what I'm saying? And my pack was the number one selling pack for a couple of times, so, right. yeah. I don't fuck with Splice. Yeah, so <laughs> There's one thing I know about this guy right here. He has his reservations about Splice. I was trying to be man. nice, Sonny. I'm sorry, bro. <laughs> fuck them folks. Hey, man. Fuck them folks, for real, man. I'm standing on that one, man. Why, why you feel so strongly about it? Man, honestly, because, like, we was... I feel like they used like the first, the first little generation of producers to build up the um the company and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Then um at some point that company became a real big company. You know what I'm saying? Multi million or whatever. You know what I'm saying? They they made they start making a lot of money and um we we had never got like advanced for doing a pack with them and stuff. You know what I'm saying? We were just kind of like. We're gonna generate money from this though. It wasn't it, was, it wasn't like royalties and all that type of thing. Exactly. And so like um when the shit started getting big and they started making more money, the publishing company started knocking at their door, like y'all making all this money with our producers and stuff. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? And so I'm with UMPG. UMPG is like very stiff mm -hmm. on what they produces and everything. And so basically UMPG was like, no, y'all can't use nothing from our producers or y'all can't do no new packs with them. Right. We're going we, we gonna to freeze it, all this stuff, you know what I'm saying? And so I felt like Splice just kind of like shoved us on some like, all right, well, fuck them. We're just going to do shit with all the new, oh, the new people and stuff. And I'm like, okay, well, if you're going to do that, you know, you got to understand, like, for real, like, I made a lot of money with Splice. Like, I was making, like, six figures with them and stuff, you know what I'm saying? So I knew what my pack was doing oh, on there, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Everybody, everybody was... Every producer got my, my fucking Sunny Digital pack from Splice, man. That's, that's, niggas run up to me, they be like, yo, I got you. I'm using your pack all the time and shit. I'm like, right, that's what's up, bro. You know what I'm saying? But with the impact that, that we made so early on, I feel like we should have got a piece of the company, though. Definitely, definitely. You know what I'm saying? Like a little piece of the company. You know what I'm saying? And um, what kind of made me realize that, too, is um, I'm going over with Beat Club, which is Timberland um, um, right. Space or whatever, though. And they, they kind of doing the same thing and stuff. But from the jump, they offered me equity into to that business and stuff, so you know, right. and go over there with them, you know, but Splices, I just feel like they just kind of like did us dirty from the jump, like they should have, you know, they should have gave us some equity from the beginning because they didn't give us no money, they were just going off our likeliness though, you right. know? Yeah, it's tough, man, making that quick money, you know, especially being a young artist, a young entrepreneur, and it's all right. What are some things that you guys wish that you did know when you first, about the music business, not about making music, not about, uh, record music. What about what, what are some music business aspects that you wish you did know when you were first starting out? How long it took to get paid out? Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. And uh, as a producer, you don't get sound exchange. That's for, for performance. Right. So I got slick. Somebody told me, no, I won't make a beat for you if I don't get half of that too. Mm -hmm. you feel me? For sure. The artists get 100% of that. 100% of that. All right. Speaking of, man, so uh, if you don't know, all of the guys on this panel actually have their own music. Uh, and their own rights, you know. Sonny, actually, congratulations on Generation Now. Appreciate Sonny, you know it. What I'm saying? Hell yeah. He just signed with Generation Now. If y'all don't know, that's uh, Jack Harlow, yes, sir. Louis Uber, They all signed to that. That's with uh, Drama. DJ Drama, Lake Sheezy, and Don Cannon. So right. Um, and Tay Keith just dropped his single "Lights Out" with uh, Gunna and Dirk. So shout out to Tay and a round of applause for that. And Southside just dropped that whole that heat with Future. And my man Trav, so shout out to yeah. that. Yeah. And this is, uh, as a producer myself, man, I know how difficult it is to get these songs out. Because we're obviously not in the booth rapping our own lyrics and singing our own songs. Uh, if you could just shed some light on the process that it takes to actually get these songs out. Because you know it's some bullshit. I'm talking talk right now. Right, yeah. Who wants to jump in there? Boy, I was, boy, listen. <laughs> First of all, when did you record? Damn Travis. When did you, you, when did you record Hold That Heat? When did you actually, when was that song actually done? Man, it's crazy. He did that, like, he had did like the 
like the hook to the song years ago. Right. You feel me? Uh, Los pulled that shit up and he found it. Los is like the shit crazy. Shout out Los. He jumped. Shout out OG. He jumped on that motherfucker, went crazy. But that boy, there, boy, <laughs> you gotta tell him like I'm at your door, bro. You did. <laughs> sign off. That should be the worst though. Trying to get them to sign off and do different sign shit. Sign off. Lawyers getting back and all that. Aggravated. Yeah. Then it's Take the labels. You, you know label. the label. That's a big part of it, cause niggas like us, we have to do. Artist deals, you know what I'm saying? So it's like beyond just us getting a verse from this rapper and trying to put it out, cause they can they can fuck with us and clear the song. Right. It's still the label too, right. you know what I'm saying? And that shit just get tricky. Right, Sonny, do you think that had a part in you wanting to just go ahead and just rap on your own beats and just and just make your own songs? Only I'ma only say yeah for the business purposes though. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> If I if I rap on all my beats and stuff, yeah. I could push shit out tomorrow. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Cause I ain't going back and forth with no nigga and shit. If I don't use a nigga loops and shit, you right. know what I'm saying? Right. Like if it's just me, I could put that shit out tomorrow. But right. when I deal with a nigga, I gotta wait. You know what I'm saying? For his lawyer to hit back and make sure a nigga pay and shit. You know I'm an advocate for niggas getting paid and shit though too. So I right, right. make sure I walk a real straight line with these niggas when it when it comes to the money and them and they beats and stuff. Real nigga. So speaking of like a beast that you put out. Was there ever a beat that like you shot to somebody and you felt like this one person, this big artist could have been on and then they slept on it and then it became like a hit with like a lesser known artist? Like, like what song in particular, if you can remember any of those? I feel like every song. For real. Because you shopping to everybody, right? Man, you look at, you yeah. look at what you send on beats to, it'd be a whole bunch of niggas that have passed that shit up. But it don't be too much of that shit no more. Nigga hear some shit now, they be goddamn just straight hopping on that hoe. They ain't wasting no For time. Sure. They ain't letting another, another nigga get a hit. A nigga just want to hit a tag. That's it, for real. They paying for the take, keep tag. <laughs> oh, God. Fact, for real. I feel like that, that, that type of situation really happened when you send a beast. Like, niggas like us, mm -hmm. we in the studio with artists. You know right. what I'm saying? Or if, if, if we, like, if a nigga asks for a pack and we ain't in the studio with them, we just text it to them so we know we sent it to them and just right. them. You know right. what I'm saying? So when you guys were starting out, how did you get your beats out? Was you, were you just sending packs to just, just variously to just trying to get it placements? Or did Sound you still clear. have selection yeah. about who you sent your beats to? I was using email. Email yeah. the motherfuckers. Yeah. I ain't Somebody gonna lie. We was pressing up in Atlanta. Hey. <laughs> I'm just coming to the session like, bro, you ain't gonna listen to my shit real quick, bro. Come on, bro. Pressing up. I feel like, I feel like even deeper with me and Southside, like we was making our artists. You know what I'm saying? We had for our sure. Now we was definitely doing that. Yeah, so it was easier when we had, you know, you got Waka Flocka next to him. You can, shit, that's, that's my partner too, and he going right, up. Gosh, we, all right. You know what I'm saying? So we'll make the situation around us and shit, though. You know right. what I'm saying? Right, right. Because niggas, niggas ain't, man, ain't nobody letting nobody in, bro. Keep it real, the rap game right now, it's like we kind of, as producers, we dictated and made certain, certain niggas that we only going to feed. Like, when Future Need Beats, yeah, I have 15 of us sending him beats. You feel me? Right. We got our list, like, you know, I select few. Yeah, yeah. For sure. And I feel like when it came to Atlanta, they was doing their thing. But me being in Memphis, it wasn't no real music scene. We had 3-6, we had Gotti, you know what I'm saying? Dolph was coming up at the time, but right. it wasn't no real music scene. So I just had to work hands on with a lot of niggas and, and develop together. I don't know, Tay Keith, I can't say that, man. They had so that I, I was inspired by that that that, that sound out there, man. Y'all had some shit going on out I'm, there. I'm, I'm saying as far as in the industry, but yeah, yeah, like, you know, like, right? Like, like this, like, I ain't talking about like the three six. Uh, back okay, I'm about to say yeah, y'all had some Somebody shit going way now. Like, it was yeah. just me, yeah. Producer wise, it was me and he kid. You know, yeah. he kid doing his thing yeah. right now. You yeah, know yeah. what I'm saying? But it was just me and he kid. I mean, I think it's a different environment with ATL, like y'all having the industry there that y'all, you know, you can walk next door to five different studios versus in like, in Memphis, you didn't have that accessibility. Doing none of that right? in Memphis. Yeah, and I mean, Hell same, nah. we had that same thing going on here in Houston, so, you know, I can identify with that. So, you know, it was, it was a different, a different come up energy for sure. But you also came from a different era, you know, and you're like, with you being 25, but we hear your sound, man, it's like, it brings back that old, like that, that, that old Memphis, that five. 90s. That five, 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 five. Five, right? Like, what's your inspiration, man? I just want to put that yeah. out there. So, DJ Squeaky was like the pioneer of the Memphis sound, you know, and he don't get as credited as he should, you know what I'm saying? DJ Squeaky is like the pioneer of this shit. And what it was, it was Drummer Boy who really took that Memphis sound and made it cool, like in Atlanta with like Gucci, 
You feel me? Like all them niggas out there who was rapping on this shit back in the day. Yeah. That was drummer boy shit. He was from Memphis. You know what I'm saying? So it was drummer boy. It was uh, Tony DJ Wright. Squeaky. Yeah. See, but that's that's before my time. You know. That's all I'm asking. Yeah, you, yeah, you're young, but, but you got that right. sound. So I was like, yeah. But like as far as like Memphis, so it's like I'm, I'm, I mixed that old shit with the new wave and made it mainstream. You feel me? And also yeah. Memphis Track Boy. You know, he don't get the recognition he need either. Memphis Track Boy. Right. Yeah. That's what's up, man. Yes, I got a question, right? So we speaking on uh, about how you know you can't be one hit wonders and all this type of stuff. So was there ever a time? What is it like in between hits? Just as far as the energy goes, I feel like when you have a hit, everybody's calling your phone, everybody's texting you, everybody's checking for what you got next. But in between hits, what's the energy like? Do you ever sense like a switch up between certain artists or? I can probably tell you like early on but like now yeah. now I don't feel I was wrong you know what I'm saying but early on I was like panicking you know what I'm saying yeah, yeah. like the first hit is like a, a mix of emotions like it's like exciting but then like I said you that shit gonna die out soon you know right. what I'm saying it's gonna be another hit next year so you, you your main objective is to get another hit you know what I'm saying so mm. it's it's an exciting time but it's also like damn can I make another hit mm. you know what I'm saying like that's what got me that's that's why I signed a fucked up pub deal when I first signed it though exactly. because yeah. I waited till like my hit was starting to come down off the charts and shit though, and I ain't have none coming right. right behind it, and I was like, shit, this might be the end for me. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying, let me go get this bag right quick though, and shit, cash out. But then like as soon as I literally as soon as I did that, the next hit had came out. You know what I'm saying? Oh, so, shit. but you know, it's like it's, in between hits, it's kind of you like I said, why you having that hit? It's it's good. You can do anything you want to, but when that shit start coming down, it's like damn, you're gonna be scrambling trying to get the next one or right, right. trying to figure this shit out, but. Like I said, as you grow in the game, like shit, like I don't really be tripping no more. I be like, man, fuck it, like we gonna, right. it's, it's gonna work out. Yeah. But like as a creative, do you feel, you know, the the artists are coming to you because of that last hit that you made? So you feel like you gotta replicate that and can keep that sound, that consistent sound. Like yo, take heed, you did nonstop. So now everybody yeah, want yeah. they want this and they want they want that sound. They like yo, they come in the studio. What artists say? They like, man, I want what you gave that nigga. Or I want what you gave that artist, right? So like, yeah. as a creative, you want to switch it up. You don't yeah, want to have so that, that. that sound, the sound to be the same. So how do you, how do you navigate through that? Right. I think that was kind of like one of the main roadblocks I ran into in my career so far, because a lot of people is like my shit was sounding the same. You know what I'm saying? But it took it took opportunities for me to kind of show like I was versatile, like with the Beyonce before I let go. You know what I'm saying? Niggas wouldn't expect me to do that shit. But it was like I had to, I had to be in that, be put in that situation to know like you can't get too comfortable with this shit. You know what I'm saying? And of course everybody want that shit. And that was a wave, you know. And shit, when the when the shit ended, like motherfuckers looking at you like, ah, oh, shit, what's next? Niggas then moved on. Right. So it's like you gotta show you versatile at that point. You know what I'm saying? Gotcha. I just feel like you just gotta move fillers with it and just try. Some people just be scared to try something. Like I don't think you should keep hitting at the same shit. If you did this, like switch that shit up. That one thing you switch up would be a whole new vibe, like a whole, whole other vibe, for sure. All right, so now that you guys are all grown, big, successful, all that type of stuff, what ventures do you guys have outside of music if you do have some that uh, that you're looking to get into? So I got uh, I got like five properties. You know what I'm saying? I bought real estate. I bought my first property. When I got my first check, I bought my house cash outside Atlanta. Yeah. I had to do that, you know what I'm saying? So I just, uh, after that, I just bought a couple, you know, investment properties, put some tenants in it, got a company running it, you know, like shit like that. Then I just, I just really started tapping into the, the NFT wave. All right. So I just, I just spent, I put like, probably like 75 in the NFTs. I done made a cool 50, you right. know? And that's, and that, and I started in December. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Outside of that, you know, like stocks and all this shit, you know? Oh, yeah. yeah, there you go. For sure. Shit. I ain't gonna lie, me, I be, it's so much stuff to do, so it be kind of like hard for me to figure out what I want to invest into outside right, of this, right. though. Like, like, I'm such a, like, a person that look around and just look at everything, though. Like, I look at the chairs, I'm like, dang. I could do a chair business, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, it be like, it be like, it be like, dang, somebody came up with that and then caught it, you know what I'm saying? So for me, I, I, I be trying to like, I, I'm still in the like in the middle of trying to. I always been that person like I don't want to like really be sustaining my whole life off of just music though, but I also don't want to get into some business that I don't really like though because 
I'm not gonna say I didn't like the music, but I didn't like the music business when music I got business. into it though. You know what For I'm saying? Sure. And so I didn't want to like redo that again when I go into another venture outside of this though. So I always just be like looking around and try to figure out things that I like. Like, like I said, like just anything, like speakers or anything though, like it's so many people making so much money, like so many different ways and stuff. And it's so many millionaires. When you have money, it's gonna open doors to like other people that's having money and they tell you what they doing. When you be in first class, you gonna meet niggas that's doing all type of shit. Like, damn, you do this? Like, you make paper clips, bro? <laughs> like, damn, like, you know what I'm saying? So my mind just be going like that. Like, it's so mm -hmm. much things that, that I can do, you know, like, and right now I'm just trying to figure it out. Right now I'm doing like the cliche things, the, the, the more so of the, the safe things for me though, like, yeah. I bought, I bought, just bought another studio in Atlanta, so I got two out there right now. Club so digital, I'm telling you. Club yeah. digital. <laughs> club digital. You know about that. <laughs> yeah, club digital. We just put some stripper poles in there today. <laughs> <laughs> no lie. Good investment, brother. But um, yeah. So really, I, I've been kind of di dibbling, dabbling in a property though. But like the property I've been getting has just been like more like studios and stuff. So I've been kind of playing it safe in that right. realm. But mm -hmm. I'm looking, I'm always looking for something to go into. You know what I'm saying? All right. Sizzle. Man, as long as that motherfucker making me some money, I'm with it. <laughs> I sell all forms, dollars, five, tens, and twenties, fifties, and hundreds. So I'm there. <laughs> That's it. I right, so you just about the uh, the music making process, man. So I know for me, I'm just I'm just comfortable at home. I like to do my daily routine. Like I need that to just have my mental space right to be able to to create. Do y'all feel like y'all have a favorite? Place? Do you feel like there was a certain city that you might have made more hits in or got more placements in? Or, or is it just from the crib? Is that just where you like to be and where you like to cook up? I mean, shit, it just really depends. Cause like now I've been in the vibe where I've been going to Miami. So, yeah. you know, that being said, I've been going to the beach in Miami. South Beach, just give me a cabana or something, just relax, get my mind right. Yeah. Go to the studio with bag or something, pull up and cook up, you know what I'm saying? Like I've been I've been in in that type of bag right now. So when it comes to just really saying where I make hits the most it, it just kinda like go mm. by the season for me. You feel yeah. me? I'm I'm a nigga that I like I like stationary vibes though. Right. Like I like things to be like when I when I go to sleep and when I wake up it be the exact same things. I Me might too. wake up with an idea and I might want to just be able to press record or whatever though, or you know I want to make a beat or whatever though. You know what I'm saying? But um, for me it's just all stationary vibes though. So like, like if I do go somewhere, like if I go to LA, if I come here to come work, yeah. if I or if I'm in Atlanta or anywhere, I'm gonna stay for at least like two or three weeks just so I can, you know, have all my things in order and I can you know get used to what things are. Exactly, I'm the same way. What you saw, sir? I ain't gonna lie, I gotta bounce around. Yeah. I gotta get in the world, I gotta get in the mix, I gotta see some scribbles, we gotta hit the <laughs> club, buy some cars, then I'm gonna go to the studio. Yeah. And no, I gotta go get some jewelry, I gotta do a bunch of shit. Every time they see me, I'm on the go. Where you going? Uh, LA, where you going? Miami. Every time they see me, I just got the, no I got cow, the see shit for me to make beats, for real. This nigga Sizzle be everywhere. Yeah, I gotta everywhere. see shit. Gotta see it, like, you know? Gotta see motivation. Yeah. Oh shit, uh, I feel like at this point, man, if, uh, are there any aspiring producers, any aspiring DJs, any aspiring audio engineers out here? So yeah, I feel uh -huh. like uh, right now we can, we got some time to, uh, right, Remy, I see, we have some time to uh, go out and get some audience questions in uh, for these guys right here. Who we got first? Who we got? Our questions. Who's first? Oh, I got one. Oh, you got the professionals, man. I'm Tell you, professional. Uh, first, I want to say I appreciate all y'all coming down. Chase inviting the brother who put this together. The, we need more of this in Houston, just like my brother said. That, I mean, like, this is big. Um, yeah, because we're a major city, and you know Houston and made their mark on the map. So we are who we are, but at the same time, the rotation of cats like this coming to the city need to be on a regular basis, you know what I'm saying? But my question is as funny as that, and y'all can answer it the way you want, but what beat have you made, because y'all have made a lot of beats, where you know this beat was jamming as shit, and the artist fucked it up? <laughs> and I don't want you I to have to say it's now, but I know you done made a beat. I don't get no fuck. But that nigga Wale fucked my beat up. <laughs> 
fuck all that. Man, I was like, what are you, what were you talking yeah, about, buddy? Yeah, that was not it. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 and I fuck with doing this little music and shit, like, you know, when he rap rap or whatever, the little lyrical disaster shit, but I, I, he blew me. I was just like, I don't, uh, just tell him to pay me. Tay? Tay? I, I, I can't even think of none of them. I plead the field. I ain't gonna talk like, about nigga on the bus that, like that. You know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna talk about nigga on the bus Don't do that, Tay, like don't do that. Tell the truth, <laughs> Tay, don't do that. Not that, brody. What a bottle at? Tay just need a little shot. He go, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's all you need. But I'm talking shit. Sign it. Damn, Tay, you can tell them folks, man. <laughs> <laughs> we all got one. My, mine is Dej Lope. I'm not going to tell y'all the song. <laughs> Dej Lope? The song was... It was boo-boo? Trey. Don't it, don't it, that shit... Well, 100% name, my and boy. That, that is going hard. Like that. Nah, she go hard, but just not that that's day. That's my dog. <laughs> not <laughs> not going to lie, but I fought with age though. I was just disappointed, though. But that was early on, though. Now, I don't really yeah. give a fuck, though. <laughs> it's all hard. That was man. a bad day. That's all. Man. Go ahead. Who got the mic? We passing the mic. It's all. Go ahead. All right, bitch. So, um, y'all answered my initial question about loopers, but what? Well, I'm a, like kind of early producer. What advice do y'all have on somebody that's trying to get out the habit of using loops? Learn how to make beats without the loops. You lose the money every time. You got to get a loop 25%. You ain't got no 50%. Just split with a looper. Don't let it be three other niggas on the loop. I've been cussing that, their ass out. And that's that's the main them. thing. That's these the niggas, these thing. niggas have their whole household, five yeah. niggas on one loop. I'm like, yeah. bro, y'all use three sounds. That's the main thing. So it's all five of y'all did this? Hey, what? bro, really? Real shit, man. I, I'm a nigga. I don't really fuck with loops. I'm going to come out and just say that, though. I don't fuck with loops. I use them, but I only use them for the sake of time, how, and how niggas want shit done and how quick shit go. You know what I'm saying? But the ones I use is niggas I fuck with, and I know how the business is, and I know it's just him, though. Yeah. But... Like overall, I don't really fuck with loops though, because like as a producer though, I really fuck with this shit though. I really, I really base my shit off being creative and like doing versatile shit and shit that y'all wouldn't expect and shit though. You know what I'm saying? And like, I don't want to just be putting drums over a loop and shit though. Like I don't feel like I'm getting anything conquered right there. Like I don't feel like I'm proving myself a point. Like you know what I'm saying? Like like if you really try to dig in, like man, fuck that shit. Learn how to do your own shit though. The same, they got the same tools you got though. You can exactly. do all this shit on contact, bro. I feel like when you when you speaking on loops, you automatically boxing yourself into a specific sound because yep. most loopers nowadays doing the same type shit. So if you develop your own sound, bro, and you, you know what I'm saying, get some hits, then I feel like it's cool to do some loops and shit here and there because you know at that point it's, it's easier for you. Or even if y'all niggas just start getting creative with the loops, y'all niggas just dropping the loops in and putting drums over them. Right. I'm like, man, come on, man, this ain't nothing, man. Yeah. I, I know what's going on. I be like, man, just get creative, reverse that motherfucker or something, throw a reverb on your shit. Yeah. So, so I'm saying, like, do something. Shit, Chop this hoe up, like, get creative, though. I, I, you can use a loop, but get creative with the loop, though. That's how I feel, though. But that's just how I may be, so if you may be using loops, which I see a lot of niggas do, I ain't knocking it, though. But if y'all want to go, like, beat for beat with a nigga, y'all can't fuck with a nigga like me. Y'all stop, stop at loops, bro. You know what I'm saying? So what about sampling opposed to loops? Because this is essentially the same thing. Sampling so. worse. <laughs> a loop, don't, nobody really don't own it. You will sample some shit, and them folks say they want 100% of the record. 100. For sure. Like, it ain't shit you could do about it. Uh, but you obviously not opposed to it, right? Because you use samples. When, you know, the when song usually be fit. five foot. Yeah, if you just don't care. If so, you know, we do, I do that sometimes for the culture. I really don't give a fuck. I still... I just, it's I mean, one of your you, biggest you records. Gonna, you gonna make more money off off of what what that song do than just the actual revenue right. from that song, though. Like if I say, exactly. I, I always be telling niggas, bro, like like you can't really live off the revenue of a song, man. You gotta live off every, all the things that you could do from that song, though. Like shit that you can, you know what I'm saying? If you if you depending on that check to come every three months, man, you are gonna be broke, man. I swear sure. to God, man. Yeah. And the one thing with loose man, you gotta watch out. Like they were saying, you might get a loop and, and the producer, the loop maker might say like, oh, it's just me yeah, yeah, when it comes to getting clear. And that's when you look up on these song credits and it'd be six, seven niggas on one beat. Cause you got one nigga, he might've played a little chorus on it. Then you got another nigga playing, you know, actually doing all the work. And now you look up, you get maybe six, 7% of, of a joint, you know what I'm saying? That you put your heart into. So you gotta be careful with those loops for sure. So. Okay. Yeah. Um, first of all, thank you for this panel. It was incredible. All of you guys have shared a wealth of knowledge that has been just amazing to hear and really interesting. Also, you guys are all incredibly charismatic, and so now it makes sense, like, 
how producers bring so much personality to songs, and now I'm hearing you guys all, I'm like, oh, that makes sense. You guys are really incredibly charismatic, have so much personality, and that's why like producers bring the zhuzh to every single song. So, wanted to give you guys that. Second, we've talked a lot about music in the past, music in the present, but we haven't really delved into music in the future. And I know, Taheed, you mentioned something about NFTs. I know we're talking about loops and ownership and kind of like how you're not really owning your music in that right. So I wanted to kind of ask you guys, where do you see music going? What is the benefit to NFTs for music producers and then also yeah. upcoming artists? Yeah, so I just invested in this company called Sound XYZ. And basically, Sound XYZ is a company where you can buy, it's, so it's a song, an artist will drop a song, and you can buy a shirt within the song. So just say the, the song might got 50, 50 uh, shirts of it, you know what I'm saying? And it, and it sell out like in a minute, two minutes. And what they'll do is is is, is get like the 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 shares relisted on secondary, you know what I'm saying, markets and shit like OpenSea or whatever, and it'll it'll sell for three times what it was, you know what I'm saying, originally listed for. So that's kind of like the future for songs, and you know, it's a way for artists to make music because you can sell 50 shares for one Ethereum each, you know what I'm saying? It's just say Ethereum 3,000, 50 times 3,000, you'd have made 150,000 off your song, you know what I'm saying? And just say, you know, the songs on the, on the secondary market start going down. Guess what? You can buy all your shares back. Now you done made basically a whole free hundred thousand of your own song, and still own one hundred percent of it. You know what I'm saying? Well, where do you see that working for like upcoming artists? Yeah, because so so. Yeah, so you know, if they want if they wanna be a part of the opportunity, they gotta, you know, set themselves up for it. It ain't easy, you know, you gotta be tapped in, you gotta know when the drops will be, you know, gotta know when people gonna sell or what's coming up, you know, uh, sound XYZ got it where, you know, songs that from artists you probably never heard, three hundred followers and shit, they selling out twenty thousand dollars worth of they song that they making, you know what I'm saying? Of course they doing they split, but it's still like this artist probably would never made five thousand off their music if it weren't for this. You know what I'm saying? I feel like NFTs is for show, sure. like <clears throat> the future for like unsigned artists and stuff, or people who don't want to be signed and shit though. Like this, Definitely. that that's gonna be your route. I, I I can't tell, I can't sit here and like spill the whole thing out. Like it ain't no secret and shit though. But it's just a lot of shit though. But if y'all dive in and see like. You can go get your own research and see it's like a whole, it's basically like y'all breaking down a dollar, everybody just putting in on a dollar, you know what I'm saying? It's easier for everybody to get a piece of something versus one person like trying to buy one thing though, you know? So it's, it's becoming like a place where like, if you a broke artist, that means your music just ain't good though, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like for real, that, like NFTs, that's just gonna be for everybody in the future though, you know what I'm saying? Unsigned, I feel like, you know? Yeah. I'm waiting on the future. <laughs> We'll see you tomorrow, nigga. Next question. Yeah, man, I got a question for you. Um, it's more of inspiration. Um, you know, producers, we, you know, we make music, DJs, they, they spin the music and things like that. But what genre, what, what time presence of music really gets you in the mind to pick the sounds that you pick or you know, at the you know when the club is ending, we always got the little old school mix, and you guys oh, like to you know what I'm saying. What what what's the inspiration behind that? What 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 songs or what what genre of music are you really tapped into on your personal level? That's what I want to know. I ain't gonna lie, me personally, I hate I hate like putting music in genres and shit though because. You know, I like I like Adele shit, you know what I'm saying? I like some whole other fucking Tame Impala shit, then I spin back around to some Pusha T shit. So in my eyes, it's all just music, bro. So like, you know, I, I kinda, I, I, don't, I don't really, when I, for me being a producer and being the actual person that's in this shit though, when I listen to music, I try not to take no influence from it though, I no inspiration from it though, because it'll bleed into the work for sure though. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna go in trying to subconsciously make something that I like. You know what I'm saying? So like, I don't really take, inspiration from songs though, but I just kind of like take the vibe or something that I like though, you know what I'm saying? Like, and just put it into it though. But like, I listen to everything though. Like, I don't really generalize our genre of my fucking music. I let my shit just go through with it. I like all type of shit, you know what I'm saying? 
I agree with Sonny. Facts. I just, me honestly, I just listen to everything. It ain't no, you know, whatever put me in the mood, put me in the mood, it ain't no specific genre. You know what, I'm gonna say this as a, as a DJ and producer, right? So, the word I like to use is decompartmentalize, right? You, li you literally have to like separate the two almost because when it comes to DJing, I remember, especially first starting out, I used to be on my mother's kitchen counter, mixing, just practicing for hours and hours and hours upon a time. And I would go to sleep thinking about, oh, this will work in the club, or this might work at a certain party. And I used to go to sleep literally thinking about other people's music, right? But then when I started producing, that's the last thing you want to hear is other people's music sometimes, you know? You just want to tap in, oh, this is my sound right now. I'm only listening to this one genre or, you know, or to this one certain sound to, to, to shoot me forward as far as my, my music is going. And then you have to go back to the club and it's like, oh, I've been listening to this for the last three weeks, but this isn't necessarily what the people are tapped into right now, you know? So it's almost damn near impossible to just do both at the same time. It's like, literally, you have to just eat, sleep, drink music to be able to just produce your own music and, and, and provide such an experience for people at the same time, even if it's not necessarily what you'd like to do. So, because uh, when I'm at home, I'm listening to Earth, Wind & Fire, I'm listening to Stevie Wonder, it's almost no rap at all, but then I'll sit down in a chair and I'm only making rap music, you know, it's just, it's just, a, uh, it's just like a gateway, maybe those chords might inspire like a, a different rap song or something like that, so that's just kind of my approach with it. While we pass the mic, I want to ask. Uh, we, I want to ask yeah. the guys on the panel, who are y'all tapped into right now? What new artists, you know, have you just like recently tapped into from like today to this week to like last week? Somebody that's not on everybody's radar, or I that think, just might just hit your radar that you just find yourself you continue to listen to and you think they got it. Or, I think everybody tapped into Glorilla right now. She from the city, you know. She got the uh, fuck nigga free song, so you know that's Am a big thing. That, friend? <laughs> That's a big thing for the city right now, especially her being a female artist. So, you know, everybody tapped into this shit around the world right now. I like Rob for Nine right now. Yeah. yeah. Rob for Nine's going crazy. Definitely a new flavor from New Orleans for sure. I don't know. <laughs> I, I'm not going to lie. I usually be ahead of the curve knowing a lot of shit, though. But um, right now, the, the Gorilla Girl, I've been seeing her a lot, though. Like, I, I like her song. Even though it's not fitting for me, but you know, yeah. it's you a respect good, it, you understand. It's a great hey, song, bro. Hey, hey what's the nigga that said? This I'd be like, uh, be shut up. This shit, Polo just did. The PG Nook, Nook, little nigga. Yeah, the, man, I like that shit too. Who? Y'all. What's his name? Nook, Nook or something. Nook, yeah. I ain't from like Chicago or something yeah. like that. Yeah. What's up, y'all? It's Chase B, man. Um, yeah, we're here in Houston, Texas. We just wrapped up the 10,000 Hours panel uh, featuring Southside, Take Heat. It's Sunday Digital. Um, I caught up 10,000 hours just because, you know, these guys, they're my friends and we've known each other for so long over, you know, some of uh, these guys for over a decade now. And I just wanted to expand on their careers from where they started until now and everything like that. So, uh, yeah, we just, you know, came out here, chopped some business about the music industry, uh, some do's and don'ts, some ins and outs, some uh, rights and wrongs, some ups and downs and all of that. So uh, it was a great time, man. I want to shout out to the homies for coming through once again. And uh, yeah, it was a great time. Yo, it's Chase B and you watching Revolt.